Hey, what's going on everybody? You know this guy right here, Mitch Belleville. So I'm at Mitch's place right now and he just redid his whole reptile collection and he redid this incredible room and I'm so excited to show this off for you guys. So stay tuned and see all of his unique geckos. My name is Nick Pulaski. Ever since I was young, I've had two passions, wildlife and filmmaking. My goal is to combine those two passions to make wildlife content. My passion for wildlife and my collection of exotic species is constantly growing. Come follow along as I pursue my goals of educating, inspiring, exploring, and conserving wildlife, all while having fun. Seeing the beauty of our natural world. So tell me a little bit about the species. So these are the Bellatoria species, also known as the mullet skink. Okay. Um, they're from Australia, and they're one of the largest skink species on the planet. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep, they're uh, communal. They'll live together. Um, I believe I have a pair of them. These are captive bred. Okay. Very hard to find captive bred ones, um, but I was lucky enough last month to find two of them. They are recently reclassified from the Egernia species, which you're seeing a lot of at uh, shows and stuff. How old are these guys, roughly? And these guys are probably only a couple months old. I would say probably four months or so. Okay. And they're a pair, you said? Hopefully. I'm thinking due to the coloration of them that they are possibly a pair, but I uh, haven't had them sexed yet. Okay, those are really cool though. And you just have the two of those guys? Just the two. Yep. Nice. Since they're, they're kind of hard to find. No, yeah, I like their iridescent kind of scales too. They got one to them. That's really cool. These are the Blazodactylus saclavas, um, the Madagascan lesser velvet geckos. Okay. Um, I have three proven pairs of them, all wild caught. They've been here for, for I'll work on five years now. Nice. All three pairs, which is nice. They're very, very common now, but when I first got into them, they, they weren't that common at all, and I've hatched out probably cl close to 20 babies from them, so I've had great success with another 40 eggs in the incubator right now. Put, um... Yeah, he just hops right up. <laughs> <laughs> get a, like a moist tub, keep it in an incubator, just like you would with a, like a leopard gecko, Yeah. but I'll put sand in there, or, or dry vermiculite, and, uh... Put the eggs right on top of that inside the moist enclosure. Okay. So they've got the ambient humidity, but they're not directly on the, the wet surface. And what's neat about these guys is the when they lay their eggs, typically when, when you have a reptile that lays eggs, you'll see the uh, the bullseye yeah. in the egg. Um, for the first couple months, you won't see a bullseye, so you might think that they're not fertile okay. for the first couple months, but I learned something when I first started out breeding any kind of reptile is incubate till there's no debate. I'll throw them in there, and, and sure enough, you'll have babies hatch out uh, pretty soon, so. Incubate till there's no debate. Yep. I like that, actually. <laughs> yeah. Trademark. <laughs> Another species I have is the Chondrodactylus uh, fitzmonzi. These guys I got as babies. I have only, in my entire time of keeping reptiles, had two animals drop their tails. Really? And this is one of them that happened two days ago while I was uh, taking pictures of them. Okay. It happens, but... But it doesn't affect like the animal's health or anything. No, not at all. Yeah. Just a defense mechanism. Yeah, so these guys are really pretty. Oh wow, yeah. But is it like again, red? Or is that just the... They, when they hatch out, they're like, they're like a, a jet red color and okay. rusty. I'll see if I can... Two of them. The other one's hiding behind the log. He's the one without the tail. But uh, yeah, I mean that's I can see them there. Huh? They're pretty neat. Oh yeah, I can see them over really well there. Yeah, that's wild. How old are they roughly? I got them as like fresh out of the egg about a year ago. Okay, about a year ago. Yeah, I'm shipped nice. here a year ago, so they're just over a year old, probably a year and a month old or so. Okay. Oh. I always like coming here because you always have like all these like really unique species, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I like now. I just try to get stuff that people don't have. Right. You yeah. Know, that... <laughs> I think it makes it more fun. You know? It does. Yeah. yeah. Especially things that like you don't see too much about like online. You can't like look up information right. on. Yeah. Because then you know, okay, it's. It's an African species, it's rock dwelling. Right. I can wing it and see how it does, but like I said, I've hatched out 20 babies with 40 more eggs in the incubator, and they're all doing perfect. So, mm, that's do, interesting. It, do it my own way, and that's kind of like. Right, and then you learn from there. Mm -hmm. Someone has to do it, you know? Right. These are my Tinley pickups. I got four of these. These are the Bavaya Seclura. Oh, I remember you said getting those. Yep. These are the. So uh, tiny. New Caledonian species. Okay. They're like the morning geckos almost, but they're not parthogenic. So this is the runt of the the four that I got. Yeah. Um, that's why he's kind of just chilling here, just making sure he's eating and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, he did hatch out at the same time as the others, but he's a little bit smaller. So for people that don't know, what does parthogenic mean? Parthogenic is cloning, self-cloning. So okay. um, female lays an egg, um, an identical 
replicate of her hatches out. Nice. And that's it Basically, yeah. yeah. That's really cool, though. Here are the other three in here. I don't know if we're going to be able to find any of them, though. It's I Spy. Yeah. That's okay. They're tiny. I took one out earlier, and I was taking pictures of it. Oh, really? Yeah. I was just kind of chilling on my hand. But they blend into this. Right. And they're probably, like, deep and thicker than moss. They are super tiny. Tiny won't even focus. <laughs> They're the smaller version of the Bavaria Robusta. Really? Now, the Bavaria Robusta are like dwarf that. And uh, that's that's kind of what I've been interested in. Those are the ones I want to get when I saw the Seclura at the show and I had to pick them up. And how long have you been keeping geckos? Geckos? Jeez. Since <laughs> I was like a toddler almost. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. These. Oh wow. It's like a yellow. The Lipodactylus lugubris, um, just a standard morning gecko. Yeah. Uh, these are parthenogenic. So, right. yep, these will lay eggs and clone themselves. I had four, but since they hatch out so tiny, they're down to two. <laughs> <laughs> um, they ended up creeping into my Abronia enclosures, and uh, the Abronia got a snack. Yeah. So, <laughs> but. In all honesty, um, that was my intent on buying them, was to breed them and end up feeding them to Just the embryo. Just feeders and stuff yep. like that, yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's a good way, too, that you know what's going into your feeders. You exactly. Know what I mean? Yep. What's in here? These are lychees. Oh, my gosh. Sketchos. I've got two babies, which are the siblings to the larger one from really? earlier. Yep. See the contrast on them. These oh, yeah. are the Pine Isle version. So obviously this one's fired up, that one's not. Okay, so it's the same morph coloration, everything like that. It's just one's fired. Yep. That's wild. Yeah, so one was probably sitting by the light, one wasn't. Okay. Is there any other indications of what like fires them up or anything like that? Or um it's mainly temperature and uh no, nope, that's not yours. Oh yeah, it is yours. <laughs> um temperature and uh if you know the light lighting. Uh, you see what's called like a misfire like okay. sometimes uh, it'll get lighter in areas where the light wasn't hitting or was hitting. So how old are these guys again? These these hatched out between September and October okay. of last year so nice. just a couple months old. Cool. Still still babies and the pine isles are the like slowest growers too. Really? Um, yeah these are my fourth and fifth pine isles so every one I've had has been super slow and I I gut load the hell out of their feeders. I, I feed them, you know, insects, yeah. which leeches barely take insects as it is. Yeah. Um, I throw a lot of extra additives in their uh, Pangea diet, so like they're they're eating really well, but they're still very slow growers. Okay. So what's in these like uh, planted ones up here? Uh, the planted ones, I've got a, I've got the pair of uh, Boivini. I have them in a smaller enclosure right now, just because I want to monitor them, make sure they're not fighting. And they're roughly how old? I know they're imports, but like. What would you say like? The male is about uh, about five or six. Okay. And the female who's, uh, she usually, yep, she's usually over here. Um, oh, she's yeah. probably uh, three or four now. And they're such big geckos. So like you were saying earlier, like a lot of these are like empty right now. And I know that like from the last time I was here, like you were in that one room earlier. Like what are you trying to do like with all these like other empty cages and enclosures? For the most part, it's, uh, it's babies. I know I'm gonna have a lot of babies coming in soon. Sure. The lychees, because they get so big, I'm gonna have to grow them out. So the babies are gonna be moving soon. The big one's gonna be moving soon. Um, you know, most of my species are smaller right now. So yeah. as they grow out, they're gonna be into larger enclosures. Okay. And uh, you know, I have my eye on a lot of species that I want to start working with. So it's always nice to keep enclosures ready for that. For anything. Yeah. yeah. That's and even cool. if they're not like you know, even if they're, there's nothing really in them right now, like yeah. uh, too much uh, husbandry or foliage or anything like that it's always nice to have them ready just for you know let's say yeah, there's an impulse someone's got something at a show that i've yeah. always wanted you know i take it home that day didn't think i was to be taking it home that right. day you know i have a cage set up for it so that's why i have so much empty space right now no that's really cool though and you have a lot of things just incubating right now yeah a lot of uh boivini and saclava eggs okay. so the boivini eggs here these are the ones that i could pull out and they're all fertile they're all fertile, yep. I see babies moving around in each of them. That's really cool. A little bit of mold on this one, but uh, I've been wiping it off, so hopefully nice. it hatches. Incubate them just like crusty eggs. Yeah. What day are they on? Because they uh, were... Oh, because they were like hidden. Yeah, you yeah. don't know. 
uh, the bioactive enclosure of the plant in there. They just they dug right underneath the plant, yeah. laid all their eggs, didn't even know about it. I thought oh, they were done man. laying. Yeah. After I hatched the two out, yeah, I found 11 of them or 12 of them. Those are the ones I could pull, so they could be anywhere between a month and um, 160 days or so. Oh so, <laughs> so with the babies moving, they're they're close. Yeah, they yeah, have to be. I should That's have, really cool. Should have baby soon. <laughs> okay. You want to wait? You want to calm down a little bit before I take you out? That'd be a good <laughs> idea. They're not the easiest to find captive bred, so anytime I get a chance to find a captive bred, it's always uh, always a treat because these guys uh, do not do well as imports. These are the Gyra marginata. Um, they get just about uh, a little bit smaller than lychees. Okay. Um, they look kind of like lychees. Yeah, they're actually called the poor man's lychee. Yeah, it's really sharp. Very cool species. They're very, uh, they're very friendly once you work with them at a young age. That's really cool. Big. Hang on, little dude. And away he goes. Baby sock lavas. Nice. Um, old juveniles that hatched out last year. Okay. Another couple down there. Excited to be uh, finally producing is Corypholis saracenorum. Okay. Um, they are related to the crested geckos, lychees, same island. Okay. Um, but I've uh, I've had the female for about three years now. Yeah, I believe. I picked her up at a Tinley show, and then uh, the male I've had for about two years. So I finally threw them together about a month ago. I know she's got eggs in her, which is very exciting. I can't wait to start hatching these guys out. It's been something I wanted to work with for a very very long time. Really? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Come here. Come here okay. Let's see. Come here. Oh, oh yeah, she looks really plump. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's a, she's fat anyway. Oh right, yeah. But like, she. Yeah, right there, right there. Oh wow, yeah. Hey, yeah, can if I see the bulges right there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's been doing phenomenal. She's been in my care, like I said, for about four, four years now. I think working on five. Okay. Uh, but this is about the the largest that they'll get. Like she's so fat, she can't even climb up this wall. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you can really. <laughs> and she's got some uh, love bites on her a little bit. Oh yeah. Completely different species. Yeah, these are the Homophobus species. So these are a velvet gecko from Africa, whereas the other velvet geckos were from uh, Madagascar. Oh, really? Okay. Typically, these guys are very fast, very jumpy, very bitey. But I've been able to work with them, especially with wild caught, mm -hmm. um, to be be very friendly. Um, just not something you normally see from this type of species. Um, and these are the. Homophobus oh, wow, yeah. Walbergii. They'll, they'll let me handle them, <clears throat> which is not something you'll usually see from a Homophobus species, uh, but especially a wild caught Homophobus species. Yeah. So these guys are these guys are gorgeous. They have uh, if I can let her open her mouth here. They have. Um, let's see. Come on. Okay. There you go. Oh yeah, it's like black. Yeah, they have a black mouth. Um, the hint of uh, like a navy blue in there too, which is. Gorgeous. Um, she doesn't want to open up. Want to open up for me? Come here. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I saw it. I definitely yeah. saw that. But that's that's my favorite part about them is their mouths. Um, Why is it like that? Like, is there a reason or just a trait? All yeah. All uh, I believe all homophobic species have the the black mouths. The the fasciata have the black mouths. Blue black mouths. Um, and then the, the Wahlberg eye too. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, there's what also, color is their tongue? Their tongue, I think, is a, I think it's just a normal color. Just a normal pinkish kind of? So, like, yeah. Okay. So Mitch, thank you so much for bringing me to like your reptile room. I mean, this is just absolutely incredible just looking around the Aki's out right now. It's so cool seeing what you're, just seeing everything really. I mean, it's just incredible seeing like all the unique species about to hatch out and like what you're growing into this. I'm happy I help and assist you bringing down cages and everything like that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'll leave links down below to like past videos that I've done with him and Urban Art Conservation. And as always, if you could do me a couple favors as well, if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, I will see you guys soon.